to choose AWS Depressor for machine learning education. Then we'll dive into the basic concepts of machine learning and reinforcement learning. And finally, we'll show you how to get started with Depressor, hosting your Depressor community, and we'll wrap up with uh, a Q&A. If we're ready to go, let's move on. Let's get rolling. Depressor finds its origin in actually with a previous uh, service from AWS AI devices team, because developers told us that they loved the hands-on approach that we used with DeepLens, which was the first AI device product made by AWS. In 2018, Amazon SageMaker added the support for reinforcement learning. And we asked ourselves the question, how can we put reinforcement learning, this whole new technology supported by Amazon SageMaker, into the hands of all the developers that want to learn about it and literally do it? And so the idea of Depressor was born. Depressor was launched in December 2018 at reInvent. And since then, tens of thousands of developers have developed their machine learning skills and raced in the Depressor League all over the world. In the next slide, we dive deeper into what is the Depressor product. The Depressor is a combination, excuse me for the background noise. Depressor is a combination of the Depressor physical car, a 3D racing simulator in the AWS console, the 2020 AWS Depressor League, accessible to anyone all over the world, and private community races that anyone can also create on their own. On the next slide, we dive into the Depressor Evo that we just launched earlier this month uh, as it expands the learning and the racing capabilities with new sensors. The new sensors enable the car to detect objects. So you may see on the, on the image here that we swapped out a single camera for a stereo camera, and we added a light detection and ranging sensor, also known as a LiDAR. The addition of those new sensors opened up a new machine learning challenge to master and enables new racing formats because the car is now able to sense steps and objects. If you already have a Depressor car, it is possible to buy a sensor kit to upgrade your Depressor, your current Depressor to an Evo model. And both are available on Amazon.com right now. However, you don't have to own a car to start learning. You can already start in the console. If you if you go into the 3D simulator, that's where the building takes place. We'll go into it a little further in the presentation on how to get started with your model. You can build models to get ready for racing in the Deep Racer League or create your own race for your organization in less than three minutes with the community race features that I mentioned. Now we're gonna watch a small video of what it looks like to participate in the Deep Racer League.
Hey, Eva, you might be muted, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I was just talking over the video, but let's move on to the next slide. Um, now let's get into why deep racer. And as leaders of organizations, you know how important it is for teams to stay educated about technologies transforming your industry today to start building tomorrow. The growth of artificial intelligence could create 58 million new jobs in the next few years, states the World Economic Forum. Yet, accordingly to, according to a Tencent Research Institute, it's estimated that we are currently only 300,000 AI engineers worldwide, but millions of us are needed. As you can tell, there's a unique opportunity and an immediate need to develop creative experiences to introduce machine learning into our jobs, no matter what our skill level is. Experience in machine learning, like deep learning with deep lens, reinforcement learning with deep racer, GANs with deep composer, will expand your skills and help you close the talent gap. To help you and your team advance your machine learning capabilities with hands-on and fun machine learning experiences, DeepRacer is the perfect first date with machine learning. On the next slide, you can see uh, an, an article or the title of an article published by the Wall Street Journal that was published last year about some of our key customers in the financial industry Morningstar and Liberty Mutual, and how they use DeepRacer to upskill their workforce. I had the opportunity to be part of the initial event with Liberty Mutual, and it was wonderful to see the engagement and the excitement around creating new strategies to beat their lap time on the track. Since then, Liberty Mutual has organized several events through their location. DeepRacer has been a really fun way to initiate their teams and engage them with machine learning com concepts and deliver hands-on experience. DeepRacer has enabled people who didn't know anything about machine learning to create and train a model, then win a race within a single day, acquiring machine learning knowledge and practicing machine learning on the spot. On the next slide, we'll see the benefits of DeepRacer uh, to developers, whether they're students or practitioners. First, it's a very fun way to learn. You can learn about machine learning and have the ability to get started anywhere at any time. DeepRacer is an opportunity to get hands-on with machine learning, with the ability to build, train, test, and do as many iterations as you want uh, very quickly and easily through the console experience and the experimentation on the track in the 3D simulator. It's a great way to develop skills and close the talent gap we just talked about. DeepRacer users gain machine learning knowledge and can then leverage it into their jobs and new projects they can take on. Users can race models with the car. Um, as you've seen in the video, it's been very thrilling. And from experience with, uh, with several partners, it's been a thrill to have your model, your own baby, into a car driving itself on the track. The real world, when you deploy your reinforcement model to the deep racer car, is, is a magic moment. And last but not least, um, joining DeepRacer is joining a community and a competition. The DeepRacer League provides an opportunity for all participants to meet fellow ML practitioners and enthusiasts online and in person at summits or meetups. And this has enabled them to share ideas, insights, and compete in their own newly created leagues. On the next slide, you can see um, a few of our partners that have chosen DeepRacer. We've organized hundreds of events 
in 2019. And we've learned that DeepRacer is a very effective tool to initiate anyone, anyone in the company to machine learning concepts and get them to practice hands-on. Uh, you can see our customers who have trusted us include Comcast, Samsung, NASA, Starbucks, or JPNC. On the next slide, we'd like to share a short video of Morning Stars that who has set up their own Deep Racer League. They've been pioneering Deep Racer since the beginning, bringing together different teams from um, for, from their different regions. Here's a short video for you. We hope that the Deep Racer project will ignite some curiosity in folks that thought the barrier to entry in machine learning was too high, but they're looking at making their job more effective. Here at Morningstar, we empower investor success. We use a variety of research and data and services through software products to really inform our audience, our customers on how to make the best investment decisions possible. We are having our fifth Deep Racer race today. So in our Morningstar program, we have 100 teams, 450 employees participating in 11 locations, eight countries, I forget how many languages. We've got Metro League races in five major cities and then internal competitions like today's. What is happening right now? Very fresh, fresh model. The winners from all of our regional races are gonna come back here to Chicago and compete for the top spot at Morningstar and ultimately get to go to reInvent. Our team's name is Windex because I work for a team called Indexes Technology. We named it Windex because we wanted to win the Deep Racer League at Morningstar. Yeah. The team name is Team Walden. It's based on the founder of Morningstar. He was very fond of the book Walden. It has a line in it about how the sun is... manage their models in the cloud and on the car. One of the most interesting parts of running this program, you would think it was all technology people participating, but we have people from facilities and operations and business development participating in this program as well. We are kind of from business background and we are not so uh, geek and so technical savvy. <laughs> So I think that the depressor really set up a great and friendly environment for us to gradually build up our machine learning and deep learning skills, but it makes it so easy for us. It's pretty clear that gamification is the best way to learn, and there's no better game than teaching a car how to drive itself. It's such an effective training program. And oh, by the way, you're also now an expert in reinforcement learning. The code is the same. And the applications are different, but fun is universal. I was pretty nervous when we were racing. You always hope for some kind of like cosmic force to like push it forward. <laughs> At first, no one was really racing 10 seconds, but uh, then we break that line and uh, we begin to get excited. Deep Flash is at first place with 8.57 seconds. Who's gonna beat him? Walton is next. 
initially, we, we started out thinking like engineers are using waypoints and angles and stuff like that. But eventually, we kind of understood that it's, it's better to just, you know, let the reinforcement learning kind of discover things on its own. And the fastest deep racer team in North America, Team Walden at 8.34 seconds. So close, I know. I'll just give a shout out to Ryan, uh, Jennifer, Tom, Raj, Eric, and, and Scott. Um, we did it. The sneaky part of the Deep Racer program is now we have reinforcement learning experts in 11 locations in eight countries. You can ask a question and get it answered. And that to me is the most important thing. Now that you're amped up about Deep Racer, let's get started and let's get you on board with Deep Racer. We'll start with concepts of machine learning and reinforcement learning. So in this section, we will quickly run over the basics of reinforcement learning. The key takeaways are reinforcement learning is used in everyday life. And the key concept you need to understand today is what is a reward function? Here's a little context about AI. Um, if you can go back to the previous slide, please. Thank you. AI seeks to create machines that seem to have human intelligence. And this is a very broad and general concept. One aspect that humans are very good at is learning how to classify things or events and also make simple predictions based on past behaviors. Machine learning, as you can see here, is a subsection of AI that aims to replicate this human ability by using statistical techniques to build models that can make predictions. The statistical techniques build models using data, figuring out what the patterns are that intimately lead to the prediction. On the next slide, we'll dive into the three main categories of machine learning. In supervised learning, you will build a model to predict a value or classify data. The models are trained using large amounts of curated training data that have labels. An example of supervised learning is linear regression. For unsupervised learning, models are trained to identify similarities in large amount of data to help with classification. In this case, the training data doesn't have any explicit label. For example, an example of unsupervised learning is clustering. In reinforcement learning, you will build a model to autonomously predict which decisions to make in an environment. The models are trained in a simulated environment where the models can interact with their environment and learn based on the outcome of actions if an action was good or bad. An example of this technology can be found in robotics or often in recommendations of products or ads. ads. All of the models can be deployed in the real world. On the next slide, you can see that the reinforcement learning is built on an idea that is quite often used by humans. When was the last time that you used a reward to incentivize the right behavior of your pet or your kid? Think about the method used to train a pet. We give cookies for good behavior. We don't give cookies for bad behavior. And training can be simple actions like sit or stay or more complicated series of behaviors. If you are very successful, you may be able to train your dog to do all kinds of tricks and turn it into a circus dog. To be more detailed, reinforcement learning is a machine learning technique that enables an agent to learn in an interactive real-time environment by trial and error using feedback from its own actions. 
feedback is given in the form of rewards. Within the simulator, we have an agent, which is a piece of software that acts autonomously in a given environment to reach a specific goal. In our case, the agent is the deep racer vehicle, and the goal is to finish a lap around the track. The environment is the surrounding area our agent interacts in. In our case, it is the track that we designed and have configured with AWS RoboMaker. The agent starts off on the track at the starting line, which we'll refer as its initial state. The state is defined by the current position within the environment that is visible or known to our agent, which we'll need to act upon. Basically, that's what the agent sees through the camera. For every state, the agent needs to take an action to try and achieve its goal of making a lap. And depending on which action it takes in a given state, it will be given a reward or not. If the chosen action gets the agent closer to the goal, you can reinforce this action in the future through giving a positive reward, or otherwise discourage it with a negative reward or no reward at all. This reward is provided by the environment itself and specified through what we call a reward function, which is code written to incentivize behavior through parameters defined by the crea creator of the environment. The last concept here is an episode, which represents each iteration where an agent goes from the start position to a termination state. A termination state means either driving off the track or finishing a lap around the track. We'll go, we'll go over these concepts as we continue. But the most important here is to understand what the reward function is. The reward function incentivizes particular behaviors and is at the core of reinforcement learning. To run your AWS DeepRacer car, you'll need a reward function, um, and that will be your most important job to do. That's what you're going to be working on. In DeepRacer, our agent is the car. And it interacts within the simulated racetrack environment during training. In the simulator, AWS DeepRacer drives around the track, taking pictures at about 15 per second. After each picture, and if you remember, the picture is our state, DeepRacer will take an action and end up in a new state. This is called a step. DeepRacer Evo has serial cameras and LIDARs. Let's go back to the previous slide, please. So it has more in-depth view of its state and can sense objects too. DeepRacer will collect the experience, the state, action, reward, and next state. All the steps from the starting point till the terminal state is called the episode. Once the agent has collected experience, generally over 20 episodes, which is a hyperparameter that you can specify, it starts updating and training its model. The goal during training is to figure out which actions in which state will lead to the maximum cumulative expected rewards across all possible during all possible options um, and decisions. Once the model is trained, it's sent back to the agent to collect more experience, and the extent to which it explores and exploits is controlled through the model hyperparameters. Let's look at this grid race to see a practical ex example of reinforcement learning. Each state is, each square is a state. And the green square is the starting position, while the finish line is the goal, the terminal state, if you recall. Here, 
we designate the squares at the edge of the track as stop states, which will tell the vehicle that it has gone off the track and failed. A reinforcement, uh, a reward function is a function that helps your agent determine if the action it took, it just took, was good or bad, and how good or bad based on the outcome of the action. The reward function is therefore a piece of logic that locks, that looks at the next state, state the agent is in, and based on that, assigns a new reward. The reward function can be seen as the logic that will incentivize the driving behavior you want your agent to learn. How will you incentivize the agent to drive on the yellow center line? Anyone on the line want to throw a guess in the chat? Okay, we'll move on then. Um, on the next slide, you can see by assigning a higher reward to the center line, our model will learn that actions that stay or lead to uh, staying on the center line will get you higher rewards than actions that lead to the site where you see the reward is 0 0.2 or an X, meaning no rewards at all. Initially, our agent won't have any idea of the value of landing in a state or the reward associated with an action. So it will first need to explore the environment and then explore some more in an iterative fashion to build knowledge. Our model starts off not knowing anything about the rewards for the actions and then repeatedly explores the grid until it moves out of bounds or reach the destination before it starts again. So you can see the car here exploring the different options around it. Our, mo our model here is learning through iteration. As it drives around, the vehicle accumulates rewards from scores we defined. It also records each, state, each step the state it started in, the action it took, the reward it received, and the next state in memory. It's learning what rewards the various actions from a specific state lead to. All steps from start to going off track or finish line is called an episode, if you remember. To get the best model, the agent first needs to explore the grid to ensure that there aren't unknown large rewards that can drastically change the behavior. This is very normal, and that's what we call exploration. First, the agent needs to explore to see what rewards can be obtained from various actions. It won't settle for the first best thing. It will explore first. As the agent gains more and more experience through exploration and iteration, it starts learning what it, where it repeatedly gets higher rewards. And you can see here, now the car has learned to go straight. It then starts exploring less and moving into exploitation of what it has learned. And the convergence happens when a model starts repeatedly peaking specific actions depending on the state it is in. As the model continues training, the action from each state don't change anymore. The model is optimizing for expected cumulative, re expected cumulative return, and model performance will be the same repeatedly with subsequent update to the model, not really changing the model behavior. And here, a straight line to, to the finish line is exactly a sign of convergence. There's a trade-off between exploration and exploitation, which you determine as a hyperparameter. If you explore too much, your model may take a very long time to converge, if at all. If you exploit too soon, your model may not find the best driving behavior and potentially also fail to converge. This is, on our drawing before, we had a small grid 
an agent could easily get to each square to test out all the actions to determine which action will be will result in the highest expected cumulative return. Assuming that in each subsequent square, it will choose the action with the highest expected cumulative return. You can see here on the video of uh, the exploration, a first person view of what you can expect, the type of behavior you can expect during exploration. During exploration, you'll see a car go off the track all the time. And as we explained, it's absolutely normal. In during exploitation, you see a converged model that where the car is staying on the track. It has learned where the good rewards are and applied those, those learnings. Then we spoke about reinforcement learning being a form of machine learning where we are interested in creating a model that can learn to make autonomous decisions in an environment based on feedback signal, what we call the reward that it receives when it interacts with its environment. Reinforcement learning in the real world is like training your dog to sit using rewards. The reward function is the logic that is key to your reinforcement learning uh, knowledge. It will incentivize our model to learn the driving behaviors we want the model to exhibit. In a grid world, our agent first explores the world to learn what rewards can be achieved from each state based on the various actions. The reward function is the logic that assigns the reward based on the outcome of each action. It uses these interactions to build out a map of the value of being in every state. The value of being in each state is the expected cumulative reward that can be achieved from that state onward when following the optimal policy. And now on the next slide, I wanna take a few minutes to share the architecture of AWS DeepRacer. AWS DeepRacer is built on top of various AWS services. Amazon SageMaker trains the reinforcement learning models. We're moving the training of new features over to C4 instances. AWS RoboMaker provides the simulation environment. Amazon S3 stores the models. Amazon Kinesis Video Stream displays the video in the console. When you start a model in AWS DeepRacer console, here's what happens. AWS starts an Amazon SageMaker container and an AWS RoboMaker container in your service account, then links the two. It then passes the right parameters to start, to start the learning. The experience tables, which is state, action, new state, reward, are generated in AWS RoboMaker. After a specified amount of experience is obtained, it is sent back to Amazon SageMaker to train the model. The new model is then sent back to RoboMaker to get more experiences, and then the process continues on and on. The output models, videos, and metrics are all stored. You can then download the model and run it on your DeepRacer car, which uses Intel OpenVINO to enable model optimization and the fast inferencing. There you are. You're now a machine learning practitioner aware of what is reinforcement learning, the basic principles of reinforcement learning, and you're also familiar with DeepRacer architecture. I've listed on the next slide a few resources for you to keep exploring DeepRacer and reinforcement learning, including a training curriculum, details, details about the league, learning more from our experts, joining our community, um, and some indication on getting started with the real world. Now, to get you started, let's move on to the next, next slide. It's very simple. First, you'll just need to create an AWS account 
if you don't have one yet, when logging in for the first time, you will be able to use the free care for Deep Racer, which is equivalent to about 10 hours of training, which will be enough to create and train your first models and probably more for free. Then let yourself be guided through the console and you'll be able to craft your reward function, this so key concept of the reward function, and train your first model. Then you'll be able to submit automatically to the virtual league. It's completely free, and you'll get a chance to win a car, swag, a trip to reinvent, and of course, bragging rights. Any questions I can answer today? Hey, Eva. Um, I think a couple of questions did come over chat. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. let me read those off to you really quick, okay? Okay, um, great. First off, before I kind of get into those questions, you know, first off, Eva, thank you for walking us through all of that. It was incredibly interesting. I think one of the biggest, greatest points was the community that's built um, through Deep Racer. I think it's phenomenal. Um, and second, I'm really glad that you touched on the, on the point between the need for skills in the market and that and the gap of a lack of skills in the market. And I think that's right at that inflection point between AWS and Pluralsight. Um, but let me move on to some of the questions that just came Thank over. You. Um, one of the first questions here is, do I need any previous machine learning experience to start with DeepRacer? The beauty of DeepRacer is that you do not need any previous machine learning experience or knowledge. There is no, there's no prerequisite. As you log into the console and navigate to DeepRacer, we'll walk you through, we'll walk you through an introduction to DeepRacer, help you craft your first reward function, and then guide you into improving your reward function. And through Plural Site program, you will be able to be assisted and learn the tips and tricks on how to create your reward function from scratch. You don't need any previous experience. You can just show up, learn, and experiment by yourself. Thank you. Second question is, do I need a car to participate? The answer is no. You don't need a deep racer car to participate in any of the league events or any of the racing. Actually, the car makes it extremely fun to play with your teammates, and I would definitely recommend having a few cars and setting up a track if you have a team that wants to be educated with machine learning and reinforcement learning because it really adds to the fun, but it's not absolutely a prerequisite. You will be able to learn everything through the console into the 3D simulated environment and participate in the Deep Racer League as well. Fantastic. And next up is, how can I bring Deep Racer to my team? There are many ways to bring Deep Racer to your team. You could first race in through the community races feature in the console. So that would be a completely virtual race. You can create a community race in less than three minutes and invite all your attendees by sharing a link. And people will be able to log into the console, train a model, and then submit it to this specific race. So that will be your first event, let's say maybe qualifiers. And then you can host a physical event where you will have a few deep racer cars and a track and maybe gather all the winners from different regions and race on the track. So there's, there's a few options for you to, to get started. Uh, racing is always free. If you want more details, I'm happy to, to help you get set up on, on an event that you want to, to put together. Perfect. Thank you. And then I think we have time for about one more, maybe two more questions, but this is a good one mm -hmm. is what does the LIDAR and stereo camera do? 
Ah, that's a that's a good question. The um, so the original depressor has one camera. Adding a second forward-looking camera enables to add depth sensing. So the car is now able to detect objects and therefore adapt its behavior to what it what is ahead of it. And then the LiDAR is able to detect objects on the side and behind and is able to uh, provide data so that the car can now sense in the front side and back and adapt behavior, swerve around objects. And this adds more complexity to the challenge and allows you to develop new skills to be able to compete in higher levels and just uh, go dive deeper into reinforcement learning. Perfect, thank you. And it looks like we're kind of running out on time. So I'm gonna close this out for today, but before we close, um, Eva, you know, we really appreciate having you here today. And also, you know, thanks for everyone um, and, and all of your questions. Thanks for having me. No worries. Um, can we go up one more slide? Um, also, remember, we are running a raffle for an AWS Deep Racer car in plural so that will follow up with the winner of that raffle um, an email in 24 hours. Also, and, and super importantly, the series is really, really great. On August 25th, we have part two of the AWS Deep Racer series coming out. The subject is reinforcement learning and refinement. Remember, there's no need to sign up again because all guests who came today are pre-registered um, for the entire series. So only thing I need for you guys to do is be on the lookout for an updated calendar invite and reminder emails. Can I go one more slide? And finally, register for Pluralsight Connect. It's a five-part virtual briefing for tech leaders and teams who are building the products of the future. The series begins on August 18th, so be sure and keep an eye out in your inbox for a link to register. As always, we've really enjoyed our time together. Stay healthy. 